Welcome back. Just before the short break, we were talking to our distinguished guests, Mr. Haroon Khan, engineer and Secretary General of Muslim Council of Britain about integration. My question was that when a lot of Muslims are concentrated in one particular area, probably, probably it goes, gives out the wrong message, you see. Can we improve on this? Is it right? I think we have to look at, it's probably different for different towns and cities. Mm -hmm. So London is probably quite different to some of the more northern cities, um, Bradford, Bolton and other areas. London is a large city. So in the larger cities, even in Birmingham, say Manchester uh, in London, I think it's natural for people to live in areas or be close to family yeah. and friends who they can communicate with, they share the same food, you know, same shops and so on. Um, that's not uh, abnormal. We also have to consider historically that lots of communities were housed in this way by government policy, right. by local housing policy, by government policy. People were housed in, in this way. So if they were given, especially for those in, in public housing, so if they were, they were put into specific areas, so it's not just uh, Muslim communities, mm -hmm. it was the same for the black community as well, uh, being placed in certain areas. The Tower um, Hamlets has a history of uh, immigrants coming and right. settling here and yeah. then moving out. So that I, I think, you know, you would know this. I think the trend in, in those days, in the 50s and 60s, was that if somebody is coming to the UK for the first time, they would naturally want to go to a place where if they, some of them didn't speak the language properly, right. they would want to find somebody who can help them. Right. Uh, I would do the same if I went somewhere. I mean, obviously, I speak English now. Mm -hmm. It's not so much of an issue. I mean, it's an international language. Right. Uh, but even then, if I was looking for a job in, in, in a foreign country, if I knew that there was someone there who I knew, um, I would try to be nearby um, for extra help. Yeah, you were right. I've, I've seen this in Jeddah. I've seen this in Mecca. Yeah. Where people... Expats. Are, yes. Yeah. So the difference is when you're a British citizen going abroad, you're known as an expat. Right. But if you're a foreigner coming to the UK, you're known as a immigrant. migrant <laughs> or economic <laughs> migrant. <laughs> right, see. But, uh, well, there's a difference. Uh, there's a difference uh, <laughs> in that. You see, the next pad does not uh, uh, try to become a citizen. Yeah, it's true. He will come back. See, true. See. And then some countries do not offer citizenship that easily. See, yes. see. You can live there for 25 years. And still and not have still citizenship. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. And still be considered a foreigner, an Ajnabi <laughs> in, in the Middle East. Uh, there are other areas like... Uh, I mean, uh, the Juma Khutbah. I, whenever I go to a mosque on Friday, I mean, you do, and you probably feel the same way. Uh, this is very standard. We have been uh, hearing this for a long, long time, as you see. And sometimes uh, the very ec uh, excited and probably very uh, smart. Uh, Imams, they put in a sultan dalillah fil ard. I do not know when I, sometimes I object. Even in Bangladesh, uh, when I objected, they said that no, no, it's okay. And then the other said that it's okay. And I said, if we think it's okay, it's okay. But to me, it's not okay. Because I don't consider the sultan dalillah fil ard and manahana huwahana Allah. <laughs> Anybody who insults him insults Allah. So that's, to, to me, that's not true. But then the khutbah is an opportunity to address the people, see. Uh, uh, and, well, there is, there is a part of dua and that is okay, see, but the other part mm -hmm. where, where you could discuss uh, the current affairs, the yes. situation of the community, this, I mean, in some mosques there, there is an extra hour given to, extra half an hour given to the, the local problems and all that, but then that is not uniform. So could we do something about this? Is, is Muslim Council of Britain can do something Yeah, I mean, we, we, um, we are the Muslim Council of Britain, we're not the Islamic yeah, Council know, of Britain. Yeah, I know that. No, I understand. So we do give out um, on, on certain topics, depending on what's happening in, in around us, on occasion, we actually do produce a template. Mm -hmm. which is available on our website. We share right. it with our affiliate organizations, but it's freely available to um, but those. But there's no those compulsion that they have to exactly. use. Exactly. It's just there. You know, it's, it's available for you to use at your, you know, you can take it and use sections of it. 
Um, so on occasion, um, we would do so when we did our um, visit my mosque initiative in in February, yep. which was about encouraging people to come and, and visit And I must mosque. say that was a really good idea. It, it was it was hugely successful. We had two hundred mosques open on the same day in the UK. So leading up to the event, mm -hmm. we did a we produced a, a khutbah template, uh, provided to everybody so they could encourage their congregation that they should tell people and their neighbours and their friends that this event is taking place, mm -hmm. and also giving the evidence from Quran and Hadith on why they should engage and, and invite people. Um, that's one example. <coughs> um, uh, there's been templates on domestic violence, for example, which is, um, you know, the media portrays Islam as being yep, violent yep. towards women, which is quite the opposite of what our uh, religion actually teaches us. So on, on topical issues, we do produce um, templates for, mm -hmm. for imams. Mm -hmm. And I think in terms of the, the first point you raised, it, we live in a uh, society where we're very diverse, as I said, ethnically and also theologically different schools of opinion and everybody's doing something different. So we have moved quite far from when, like you say, when the khutbah was always in Arabic, mm -hmm. it was always a textbook khutbah yeah. and probably from something that was written, you know, 1400 years, years ago. ago. Not, yeah. not Obviously, the Quran and the Hadith, but the text of the language, yeah, yeah. which for those who are reading it probably don't realize they're referring to something of the past, yeah. which wasn't relevant to us today. And, and Alhamdulillah, we've moved on. Um, it's changing, it's growing. And even for the people who ha hold the opinion, uh, rightly so, that the khutbah should only be in Arabic, mm -hmm. um, they spend some time in doing a translation beforehand <coughs> to yeah. make it more relevant to yeah. the audience. But I absolutely agree with you. The khutbah, the sermon that the Prophet Sallallahu used to give was a unique opportunity to address the community on current issues, to bring them to, to remind them about the religion, but at the same time, remind them their duties to society. Mm. Also that the Imam uh, and the Khatib should be able to communicate uh, in English, you see, because yes. a lot of young people are there and uh, sometimes they can't understand uh, uh, that kind of English, you see. I yeah. remember I was sitting and uh, once a young man asked me, Uncle, what is July? And I said, it's the month of July and not July. You see. <laughs> so, so there it was. You see. I yeah, mean, yeah. And I said that I understand your problems, you see, and I will talk to the Imam later. You see. And I went, but you know, obviously you, you, you can't convince them that. Mm. They said most people understand my English, so what is the point, you see? He cannot improve. I mean, somebody who is 65 cannot improve his English or cannot change. See, but I am see. I've seen that young imams. They do speak very well, mashallah. Yeah, and they can communicate. They can uh, relate to the young uh, uh, persons, uh, particularly. I mean, those persons who were born here, went to school, and and they cannot understand. Uh, uh, the other kind of English, you see, they have to be uh, spoken into and they have, to, they have to use the right words rather than, you see, going around in circles to make the point. Uh. It's an area for us to improve. I think um, another, camp, another initiative that we did was in uh, January this year, we did a big conference called Our Mosques, Our Future, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where we gathered 400 representatives from mosques, institutions, trustees, uh, some of the leaders from different councils of mosques, they came down. We had a one-day conference. Uh, we listen to some speakers, we hold some workshops, and then we also launched a consultation at the end of the conference, which is still open. It's called the Better Mosques Consultation. It's open to the public. Anybody can feed in and give their views online. It's on our website. Um, but the, the purpose of it was that we need to look to the future. Sure. Um, so the theme of the conference was Our Mosque, Our Future. Um, uh, and one of the other themes was more than a prayer space. That, yeah, as you know, the, most important, see, what the mosque itself is primarily a place of prayer, but as we know from the Prophet's mosque in Medina, he did so many other things there. It's the hub of the society. Very much so. Activities took place, he met delegations there, he gave lectures there. It was a they seat of events. learning, it was a seat of uh, estate. Yes, so it had multi-purpose. And so we, we tried to deliver some of that, and, and one of the big issues that came up from, not from the conference, but that's been building up, is access for women, which has been a major uh, issue for a number of years in, in some mosques where women are unfortunately, sadly, uh, are not able to enter the mosque to yeah. pray. Yeah. 
Yeah. Which is very strange. Um, they, they are sometimes welcome to come and attend a, a, a meeting or something, yeah. but not uh, to pray because maybe because of lack of a space. There, there are mosques which um, around the country where, for you know maybe for funding limitation or space limitation, but even some of those mosques who don't have a designated space for women wouldn't allow women in out of hours. Right between the prayer time. So, you know, if you're on a journey, we've heard many stories. Even the husband and wife, they're on a journey somewhere, they're traveling yeah. and they stop to pray. And the husband prays, but then the woman, the wife is not allowed to come in to do her, her prayer. And so, so she ends up either missing it or just praying on the street, which is really not where we want to be as, as Muslims uh, in society. And uh, funny enough, you mentioned it, today's khutbah in my local mosque the Imam specifically mentioned this before he went into his main khutbah. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that a woman can go freely anytime into a church. She can go there, the door is always open. Right. But we turn women away from our mosques. Whereas the Prophet said mm -hmm. very clearly, don't stop the women coming to the mosque. So, you know, we, we, we have a, we, we've embarked on a journey to increase the participation of women and also young people. Well, this is, is, what is the reason? I mean, why would IRB be so narrow-minded? Narrow is it because of lack of understanding of the... I don't, I don't know. I think maybe, I mean, I mean, there's no real deep study done in this, but I think some of it may be to do with where, where <coughs> our earlier generations came from. So someone like yourself obviously has a good understanding of Bangladesh. Um, I've been there a few times. And if you go, especially in the villages and so on, women don't generally go to the mosque. Yep. It's just not culturally, they're just not, they don't need to go, they don't go. And I think once people have come here, they probably, when they built the mosque, it wasn't really in their mind that there's a need for women. I mm -hmm. think that's part of the problem, that people didn't realize that women here want to go to the mosque. So it's almost like a, a South Asian kind of view, cultural no. view, <laughs> rather than a religious view. Yeah, but uh, back in Saudi Arabia, even the smallest of mosques, they do welcome there you go. women. So the, the, you can see that's very much a cultural yes, yes. shift, isn't it? I think it's, it's for over a time period of time, uh, people have accepted a certain view. Um, and you're right, I mean, well, we, obviously we've been for Umrah, but you, you've got more experience from the smaller mosques um, it's good to know that because I think even knowing that and giving that message to here to say, you know, I mean, this is commonplace. This, yeah, this could not happen that you were driving and you're It's probably the same with Arab, sort of Arab-backed mosques or yes. where there's Arab communities within the UK. Uh, I think most of them would have space for women because yes. culturally for them, that's what they do. Well, that, that is an area that must be looked into because uh, we don't want to leave our women behind. and Absolutely not at home to pray yeah. and then uh, we think that we go and pray and then we get the sabab and they don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now this, uh, this extremism and radical thinking, we are coming at the end of this uh, segment but uh, we would like to talk about this next uh, segment. Uh, there's a lot of uh, well, uh, extreme ideas floating around and we are blamed for that, our community, Muslims are blamed for that for, for obviously wrong reasons because extremists can be anywhere. Right now there was this nerve agent yeah. <laughs> being used and that is not uh, something positive, that is another example of extremism. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah that we are not blamed for that. Yeah. Uh, are you I wanted to ask you later, but uh, okay, that will be in the next segment. Okay. Uh, thank you for being with us, uh, dear viewers. Uh, and when we come back, uh, we will have uh, a lot of other questions uh, to ask. Thank you. <laughs> 